Nothing caps a night of rock and roll better than the local diner, preferably at 3 a.m. Pete Genovese is living the dream. He is the food and features writer for NJ Advanced Media. Uh, and Pete joins us now. Pete, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I, I can't imagine the drudgery of your job. <laughs> Well, you know what? You're probably the first person who ever said that because I, I constantly I get you have the best job in yes. New Jersey. You know, they pay, I, I I go I go around New Jersey, drive all over New Jersey, eat on the company's dime. Can't get any better than that. Well, not always. I mean, they don't see the driving. They don't see me stuck in traffic on the Parkway or Route 80. They don't see the long days. The and there's a lot of eating. I'm just not going to one restaurant. I'm, right. I might do four or five at a time. And then you have to come. You have to take photos. You have to inter sometimes interview the owners. Come back and write the story. So it's you know it has its moments, but there's a lot of drudge work involved. Yeah. But it is it is a pretty good gig. I will say that. Yeah, you know, I, it's true because people are like, oh, you were at that big press conference, or you're covering the convention. And you're like, yeah, man, we had to work till two in the morning, you know. So yeah, yeah you're right about that. Every job is a job, ultimately. But yes. I love I love reading your stuff. Uh, you Basically. had a recent piece uh, ranking New Jersey's uh, remaining 24-hour diners, which caught my eye. I mean, Jersey was once well known for its 24-hour diners. I mean, I live in Jersey City, in my town alone. When I was coming up, we had the VIP, the Flamingo, the Colonnette, the Tunnel Diner, and just across the city line in Bayonne was the Broadway Diner, and then just across the line was the Coach House Diner in North Bergen. All of them were 24-hour diners. Now none of them are 24-hour diners. What happened? Well, I mean, I did a story in 2020, uh, in the fall of 2020, after, you know, at the height or at, you know, at the pandemic year. Yeah. And there were only, th as far as I could tell, there were only three 24-hour diners. A lot of the 24-hour diners, I'm not sure of the number, but there are certainly dozens. I mean, you mentioned just a bunch right there yeah. in, in Hudson. Um, they they scaled back their hours because of the pandemic. So in the fall, when that story ran, we the headline was, you know, is this the death of the 24-hour diners? And I, again, I only counted three. So when I did the story uh, this year, four years later, there were 16, which I found. And, and I got a lot of comments like, only 16? Well, to me, 16 was a sign of hope. But since there were only three right. just four years, now there's 16. And maybe more in the next couple of years, maybe more former 24 hours will become 24 hours. So for me to find 16 was, was a good thing, I thought. And so I went to every single one uh, and ate like five dishes at each. Plus, always a slice of cheesecake because you know if you if you're a diner, you have to right. make good cheese, right? Uh, and then and then rated them uh, from sixteen to one. And and it's funny, and, and I still get it. You mentioned the Broadway diner; people were insisting it was a twenty four hour diner. There's a sign out front. Yeah, we're talking Broadway diner, Bayon. There's a sign out front that says twenty four hours. And I think on the website twenty four hours. Well, they're not. So I, I drive all the way up there. Let's say I live in Southern Ocean County. I drive all the way up to Bayonne because I, everyone was telling me it's a uh, 24 hour diner. I sit down, ah. ready to order, sit down, ready to order my five dishes. I ask the waitress, are you 24 hours? No. I'm like, oh my God, I drove all the way up here. <laughs> so I, I ordered their world famous pancakes anyway. So I didn't want to waste a trip, but they're not yeah. 24 hours. So please don't, after you hear this, don't tell me it's a 24 hour diner, despite the sign out front that says 24 hours. It's not 24 hours. They close early a couple nights a week. There's the old Stephen Wright joke. Yeah, we're open 24 hours, but not in a row. So let, <laughs> let's take the top five from uh, your list. So give them to me and, and what, it, what it is about them that puts them there. Number five is the, the State Line Diner in Mawa. Uh, the State Line Diner, well, it was not. I mean, I was rating the diners. It, it was food, but it was also service, tradition, atmosphere, yep. and service. Easily, the most colorful waitress was at the State Line Diner. She was, she was funny. Uh, she said she took a look at me. I told her what I was doing. She said, "You're so skinny, I could slap you." Yeah. <laughs> and then, then she said, "You're going to another diner after this?" I said, "Yeah." And then I'm going to home and uh, go home and eat dinner, and I'll still weigh the same. And she said, "Well, when you come back, I hope you're fatter." So it was, well, you know, there's got to be a book in there somewhere about Jersey uh, wait, uh, diner waitresses, which I think would, would be a, a good book. Uh, number four on your list is uh, the Park 22 Diner in Greenbrook. 
Yeah. So number four and number uh, three were both are both the same owner. They share. Oh, owner okay. And the quality, and you could tell that they pay attention to the quality of their food. Uh, Greenbrook uh, Park Twenty Two in Greenbrook used to be the Sunset Diner. Everybody knew the Sunset Diner. Uh, I had some French toast. From, uh, Happy Waitress, of course, the traditional grilled cheese and bacon. I had that. Uh, lasagna. Who orders lasagna in a right. diner? Uh, yeah, that that was good. The French toast with the the berries. Who orders French uh, lasagna in in a diner? But their lasagna was pretty good, and I'm Italian, so I know my las- lasagna. Interesting. Uh, that's number three. The Park Avenue Diner is in South uh, Plainfield. I've been there. I've also been to the Chit Chat. Who hasn't been to the Chit Chat? I guess in in Hackensack. They're number two on your list. Right. So the Park Avenue again, same diner as the uh, the Park Twenty Two. Uh, ribeye was probably the best meat dish I had. You know, I, I was eating, you know, uh, veggie dishes, meat dishes, you know, breakfast. Bre- it was a combination of breakfast, lunch, and dinner, my five dishes. Right. So that ribeye was probably at the Park Avenue. It was probably the best meat dish I had uh, on this entire mission. Good cheeseburger, good Greek salad. I'm picky when it comes to Greek salads, and they had one of the, they had one of the better ones. I had some waitress there. Have, have you ever seen anyone order this much food? She said, no. <laughs> and number all, one. You, probably, you can take a look at the, the photos on the website. The, the table was just covered with dishes. And I told them, this is going to sound funny, but I'm going to order five dishes whenever they're ready. You don't have to bring them out one at a time. Whenever they're ready, just bring them out. If they're all out at the same time, that's fine. I'm just going to sample. And I took, you know, took everything home. Hmm. And the Clinton Station Diner uh, in Union Township, is that 100 and right? Uh, is number I mean, one. The other Union Township, right, right, right. along uh, 78. Yeah. Uh, and it was funny. So I, uh, I reviewed them back in 2004 when they first opened. And I, I found uh, it was a really hard to try to say something nice because the food right. was pretty old. So I come back, uh, you know, 20 years later, and they end up number one on my list. Hmm. Uh, and the cool thing about that diner, of course, they have, uh, you'll see that, uh, call up the story, you'll see the photo. They have the 1924, 1928 Blue Comet dining car as one of their dining rooms nice. so if you can get in there to eat yeah it's, it's it's very you know no other diner has an actual train car in the uh in the diner yeah uh, roast beef you know another thing i'm picking on it's got to be it's got to be red rare and juicy and their their roast beef sandwich met all three of those criteria i got to put okay. a shout out here real quick to the andros diner number six on number your six. list i'll always remember the andros we were there the night Superstorm Sandy was raging across the state, thinking we were going to do a live shot at 11 p.m. And the power went out right in the middle of our, our meal. Ate by flashlight our burgers, did we? Uh, and and um, we, still had to, we still had to pay the bill anyway. So yeah. <laughs> move yeah, on. They, they were, no, it's funny. So I talked to the owner when I was there. And I, I, I never, I didn't identify myself, uh, or I don't identify myself when I'm doing these uh, eating uh, missions, because you don't want to get, treat you don't want to be treated special yeah or you don't want to go to come up and say you know this meal's on us no we always i always pay for my food yeah. always so i did talk to the owner he said in back in the 50s the diner started as the spotless diner which yeah. is which is a great name the spotless diner nice but now it's andros yeah named after an island in greece I, I, you have to assume that it's a diner um it's summertime right so let's talk about jersey in the summer um, the experiences really run the gamut. I love summer in the city. Some people like to camp, Stokes Forest, etc. But the Jersey Shore really defines summer for a lot of people uh, in Jersey uh, and from far and wide. I mean, Canada, Italy, China. Uh, you're out this week, I think, with the ultimate Jersey Shore bucket list. 35 essential experiences for summer 2024. What's your top two or three from these? Oh, boy, they're all great. Um yeah. And, and, and they, they, it's a range, and it covers the whole shore, you know, uh, Atlantic Highlands all the way down to, to Cape May. Yeah. I mean, Atlantic Highlands has a Mount Mitchell scenic overlook. You know, I, there's, I, you can uh, question 10 random New Jerseyans on the street, and I bet you nine of them have never heard of it, much less been there, but it's the highest natural elevation along the Atlantic, the entire Atlantic coast, if you're not counting the islands. It's a great view of New York. Uh, Verrazano and Aaron's Bridge, you know, the Bay, the Ocean, and Manhattan. So Mount Mitchell Scenic Overlook. Uh, Ocean City Baby Parade, now uh, 100 plus years. It's one of the oldest 
baby parades. I call it the single greatest uh, spectacle of the shore every summer. It's just, it's it's not just babies walking down the boardwalk. Their parents make floats, basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah, wagons, you know, uh, trailers, and they decorate them. The kids are decorated as you know, fishermen, farmers, mermaids, princesses, and they, you know, they vie for prizes. And of course, you know, who's, who's, who's the grand prize winner of the baby parade? That's a big deal. But it's uh, uh, the, 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 the actual dates in the story. But if you have to do, if, if you go down there and you don't smile at this spectacle, there's something wrong with you. you know, Coors ice cream is on your list? Coors, of course, of course. Yeah. I, I said many times, no, Jersey Shore summer is complete without a trip to Coors or Coors or brothers. They're sort of two sides of the same family. They started at Coney Island way back in the twenties. And now they have there's together there's about a dozen cores or core brothers up and down the coast. But it's just that creamy, smooth, uh, you know, the cream school oh, is sort yeah, of man. legendary flavor, but give me just plain old chocolate. That's, that's the stuff. Yeah. That's yeah, the and it's stuff. on the it's on the boardwalk and yeah. maybe it's a hot day and it's nothing more refreshing than soft serve. Why why do we love the shore so much? I think I think it's in our collective DNA. Uh, I still run across people. I find this hard to believe who never in their life have been down to the shore, and, and I'm not trying to like why don't you, don't you at least want to go at least once? I think yeah. some of it's they don't want to deal with the traffic in the summertime. They don't want it, the crowds. You know that's in the summertime. Well, go off season when it's even better. There's less people there. You have the boardwalk to yourself, and there's still restaurants are still open. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's our collective DNA. We just can't keep away from it. There's something about all that sun and sky and sand that beckons. Love uh, it. It's, I've lived. I've lived almost half my life down the shore. I can't imagine living anywhere else. Uh, and like I said, you just have to sort of forget the parkway, traffic on the parkway. Right. And you have to, like, you don't go down to, if you live in North Jersey and want to spend the day at the shore, don't go down on a Saturday morning. Yeah, it's going to take you forever. The parkway is jammed from, like, the Union Tolls all the way down to Seaside and beyond. Yeah, yeah. go the night before, go crack a dawn. You know, Saturday, if you have to leave on a Saturday, go like five, six o'clock in the morning. But don't don't leave your house at like nine and ten o'clock in the morning. You're going to sit in traffic half the day. Yeah, because unlike a lot of things in Jersey, it's the destination, not the journey when it comes to the shore. Pete Genovese yeah, yeah, yeah. is the author of Jersey Diners and several other books, including uh, New Jersey State of Mind. Pete, good to see you, man. Enjoy your summer. Thanks. I will. I already am. Thanks for having me on.